Amen. 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 Thank you, Deacon Word. Amen. Uh, we are in that season. Amen. Where we acknowledge and celebrate the birth of Jesus our Christ. Amen. And, and as we are celebrating, amen, in this season, uh, we are not able to celebrate as we usually do with family and, and everything, but yet still we can celebrate. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. For if he had risen in your soul, then we can celebrate Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, for a few minutes uh, this morning, for a few minutes, amen, uh, we want to uh, talk to you in uh, this season that we're in. Now, I'm not talking about the Christ Christmas season, but in this season, amen, of life that we're in. I uh, want to talk to you this morning from a very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, in, you will find this scripture in Romans, uh, the seventh chapter. Romans, the seventh chapter. Uh, writing, quoting, amen, to uh, the Apostle Paul. Uh, Romans, the seventh chapter. Amen. Uh, and we want to begin our reading uh, from the 14th verse. From the 14th verse. Romans chapter 7, beginning at verse 14. Uh, Paul the Apostle writes, and as I mentioned that you pray, amen, for me this morning as we uh, come forth with this word, Father. It's in the name of Jesus. Lord, I can stand here behind this sacred desk. God, we study your word, but yet we need your strength. We need your power. Speak, Lord, that we might hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Have your way in this place. God, we realize and acknowledge that in your word is life. Amen. And you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Have thy way, O God, in the name of Jesus. Pray now that. Oh, we would sit down. You stand up. Oh, God, that oh, we would decrease and you increase. Have thy own way. God, for we need to hear from you. If we don't hear from you, we don't know what to do. So, God, show us, Lord, through your word, that we might live according to your word. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Paul writing in Romans 7. Beginning at verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I want to talk this morning from this uh, identifying your struggle and pressing through it. Identifying your struggle and pressing through it. Uh, in the world today, there are people struggling uh, all over the world. People are struggling. Uh, they're struggling with many different kinds of 
situations and many problems. Uh, but our struggles, my brothers and sisters, is not so much with uh, money and not so much with the things that we need, but our struggle comes from within. Uh, as we look at our text, we are confronted with the conflict of two natures. Uh, the old nature and the new nature. Uh, although we have been changed, and although we are new creatures in Christ Jesus, we are still confronted by our old nature. Uh, amen, amen. Uh, but the problem that we have is identifying the struggle. Uh, the problem that we have is that instead of identifying our own struggle, we are too busy looking for the struggle in somebody else. I was that with it. So here in our text, Paul, Paul not only recognized his struggle, but he also acknowledges his struggle. Uh, I was happy with his uh, So many times we are struggling, we are struggling in our spirit walk, we are struggling, amen, uh, uh, as we strive to live out uh, this Christian life. But, but uh, when we are struggling with the flesh, it's oftentimes, my brothers and sisters, we fail to acknowledge that we have a problem. But when we acknowledge that we have a Problem, then God is able to use us. Do I have a witness? The Apostle Paul, in, uh, in his writing to the Roman church, he, he shared with them that, that, that now that he had been converted, the struggle had intensified. Uh, my brothers and sisters, when we was in the world, we did things that we didn't even think no more of it. But now that we are saved, and now that we have confessed Jesus Christ, it seems like our struggle has intensified. I want you to know that we serve a God that is able to help us through the struggle. Before Paul's conversion, he was the big man on the block. It, it was easy for Paul to commit sin. Uh, because the only one that Paul felt that he had an attitude was himself. But now that he had been transformed, the struggle within him, the struggle within him has become more intense. Paul was highly educated, could speak seven different languages, and had his own disciples, and had everything that he thought that he needed. But since his conversion on the Damascus Road, the struggle had intensified. Paul was taken before kings and accused. He was buffeted by thorns in the flesh. He was shipwrecked, bitten by a viper, and thrown into prison. But, but that wasn't the real struggle. That wasn't the real struggle. He had all those struggles, but that wasn't the real struggle. Paul said the real struggle is in the inside. I have to deal with the old man and I have to deal with the old thoughts and yet I'm converted and saved by Jesus Christ. Oh, and I take the knowledge here that although he is a new creature and trust Christ as his sin, the struggle is not over. But the struggle has intensified. Do I have a witness in here? Those things that he ought to do. Those things he found himself not doing. Those things that he ought to think. Those are the things that he found himself not thinking about. But, 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 but when we put our trust in Jesus, God will help us through our struggles. Uh, Robert, Robert Robertson said this. He said that the struggle of life it's not what it appears to be. It's not a struggle for money 
not power, not any other personal achievement held in high esteem by the world. That's not where our struggle is. Amen. But the struggle, my brothers and sisters, is on the inside. Amen, 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 amen. The struggle of life is simply this. The very dark valley and gloomy depths of it. To pass through the life carrying the loving and marching and dying Jesus in our heart. That is the struggle. Paul says, but every time I desire to do right, evil is always present. Every time I desire to do right, to treat my neighbor right, evil is always present. And every time I try to walk right, evil is always present. Every time I try to think right, evil is always present. Uh -huh. Dr. Larry Kraft said this, he said that when difficulty, difficult problems grow worse, it's tempting to give up on God. When the ultimate source of our power, the powerful uses to take up our just cause. Then whatever is required to find relief, seemingly wanted, and unmerited struggle tend to blur our line of moral distinction. Every time you try to do the best that you can, Evil is always present. Things that are clearly wrong become less effective to our consciousness when they provide our only hope for relief. In other words, in the midst of your struggle, the wrong that you do, the sin that you do, seem to be less effective. But the Apostle Paul lets us know here in our text that being saved does not exempt us from life struggles. Do I have a witness? Amen. Just because you saved, just because you come to church, that doesn't exempt you from life struggles. Uh, the old man is still laying around. Can I get a witness? Uh, the Apostle Paul lets us know uh, that being saved does not exempt us from struggles. But in the midst of the struggles, Paul said in Philippians 3 13, Paul said, Brother, I have not yet apprehended. In other words, I still have a long way to go. But I'm forgetting those things that is behind me and, and I'm pressing toward the mark of the high call. So in the midst of your struggles, you ought to be pressing toward the mark. Can we get a witness here? Yes, life is hard because we live in a fallen world. Nothing works the way it's supposed to. Sin has stained every part of the physical universe. Yeah. And sin has deeply infected the human bloodstream. Right. But I'm so glad that we have a God on our side. Yeah. That in the midst of our struggles, yeah. He is able yeah. to keep us from falling. Yeah. I'm glad that we have a God on our side. Yeah. That in the midst of the struggles, yeah. if you have to reach way down, He'll reach way down and pick you up. Can I get a witness here? Things happen. Things break. Our bodies get sick. Our minds get evil. We grow old and we die. People kill each other. Marriages break up. Children get hooked on drugs or alcohol. Uh, in all these things, babies are born with defects that only a miracle from God can heal. Can I get a witness? Children now 
are molested, yeah. Yeah. critics of acquitting and giving up. Friends were disappointed. But I heard I just say a day that wait upon the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord. So in the midst of your struggle, wait on the Lord. And the Lord will see you through. So here in our text, Apostle Paul points out that the greatest struggle is the war, is the war that is taking place within all of us. Can I get a witness? You say that you desire to live for Christ, but the struggle is still there. Amen. There's a war between the old man and the new man. Can I get a witness here? Our greatest struggle is not am I going to be able to keep a roof over my head, but can I live right before the Lord Jesus Christ? Can I get a witness? Our greatest struggle is not with other people. Uh, our greatest struggle is not how to live God in a sinner, self centered world. That's our greatest struggle. But when we look to the Lord, put our trust in Jesus, God will see us through. You have a witness in Him. My brothers and sisters, we might be in the midst of a struggle, but you ought to keep pressing. Press your way, amen, toward the mark of the high mark. The Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 6 and 12, Paul said this, For we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness and high places. So Paul here recognized that there is a war going on. Paul recognized the struggle. There's a war going on on the inside, inside my mind that is affecting my life and my walk with Jesus Christ. There's something that there are some decisions that I make that affect my fellowship with the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Can we agree? Yeah. As Christians, we are in a constant struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Spirit against the flesh. Yeah. Right against wrong. Yeah. Yeah. We're struggling with how to love rather than hate. Yeah, yeah. We're struggling with how to build up rather than to turn out. We struggle with the point of how to rejoice rather than to cut. To encourage rather than condemn. That is a struggle, my brothers and sisters. But as we go through this struggle, it would just keep on pressing. Yeah. Put your hand in God's hand. Yeah. God will see you through. Yeah. As you're going through this struggle, uh-huh. lean not to your own understanding, uh-huh. but in all your ways, and God is God, yeah. and He will direct your path. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. We're in the midst of a struggle, uh-huh. but we got to keep on. Press. Paul said, so what I am doing, I do not understand. For I'm not practicing what I would like to do, but I'm doing the very thing that I hate. Paul recognizes his struggle. My brother, so many times we come to church, we fellowship, we're in the midst of a Struggle, and our struggle is not with each other, but our struggle is on the inside of us. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Paul said, so I know that nothing good dwells 
anything. When we get to the point where we recognize that nothing good dwells in us, then we can be better vessels for the use of God. We have to acknowledge that all of our righteousness is no more than filthy rags. So Paul said that the best that I do, even the best that I do, is still not enough. Can I get a read? So, so Paul recognizes the struggle. Paul said the struggle is in my flesh. For the willing is present. I'm willing to do right. But in me, Paul said, there's no good thing. So the best is I do. In other words, Paul said that even though I'm saved and I'm converted, it's not me, but it's the Christ that lives in me that keeps me going. So many times we try to take credit for the good that we do, but there's nothing good in us. So we acknowledge that the good is Christ that lives on the inside. So we're in the midst of a struggle, but we got to keep on pressing. Paul said in Romans 6 and 6, he said, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that his boy, we should not serve sin. Galatians 5, 24, 26, he says, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. With affection and love. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. My brothers and sisters, when we walk in the Spirit, we can get through this struggle. The hymn writer said, Walk in the light, the beautiful light. Come by the new God of mercy, shine bright. Shine on the righteous. By day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. When we walk in the light, Jesus is the light. So Paul said in verse 19, For the good that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. When I ought to be loved, I'm showing hate. Yeah, yeah. When I want to be encouraged, I'm talking about them behind the back. When I want to be lifted up my brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm trying to turn them down. But we're in the midst of that struggle. But in the midst of it, we got to be pressing towards the heart of the high heart. Paul said, I had got the head. I got a long way to go. But in the midst of it, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me. And I'm pressing toward the Lord of the high calling and Christ Jesus. Ephesians 6 and 10, Paul says, Be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. In other words, you can't keep yourself. But God can keep you. So be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. Paul said, so put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wild of the death. If we are able to get through this struggle, we're going to have to be wrapped up in the truth. We're going to have to put on the breastplate of righteousness. We're going to have to walk with our feet charged with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And finally, my brothers and sisters, if we are to get through the midst of this struggle, we're going to have to be persuaded in our own mind. For I heard Paul say, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Paul said that, for I am persuaded that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Paul said, I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels 
not bring it back. Power not made present, not made to come. From the height, not dead, not any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm so glad that this morning I know for myself that I have a God on my side, that in the midst of this struggle, He's able to keep me from falling. In the midst of this struggle, He will lead me and guide me. In the midst of this struggle, He is my rock. He is my salvation. In the midst of this struggle, he is my, he's my shield and my brother. He's my God and he will I trust. In the midst of this struggle, I'm going to look to the Lord. For he is my help. He is my shepherd. He is my all in all. He will walk with me. He will talk with me. So in the midst of this struggle, I'm going to keep on pressing towards the Lord. I know one day when it's all over, the Lord will give me a crown of life. I know one day if I keep on praying, keep my hand in God's hand, God will see me through. Can I get a witness in here? In the midst of a struggle, we got to keep praying. My brothers and sisters, it's a struggle. But we have to understand what the struggle is. Like Paul, we have to identify the struggle. And the struggle is not with the things or the people, but the struggle is within us. And if we would look deep inside and acknowledge that we are, that the problem is in us, then we can be better served for Jesus Christ. We can stop looking at other folks and try to assess their problems. But we have to look within ourselves and see if we are where we're supposed to be in Christ. And when we do that, we are of good use for the master's work. So Paul and I say, Paul and I text. Paul recognized. Paul said, the problem is me. He said, go, man, I desire to do right. Even his prayer. And he said, those things that I should do, those are the things that I find myself not doing right. And so Paul Recognize the problem, he acknowledged the problem, and since he was able to acknowledge and recognize the problem, he knew where there was some help Amen. for the problem. Amen. See, when we recognize what the problem is, Jesus, Jesus. when we recognize what the problem is, Jesus. we can find out who can help us yes. Yes. through our problem. Do I have a wish? So this morning, I don't care what you might be going through, but take a look. And let us look and see where the real problem is. And once we find out where the problem is, we ought to acknowledge that. We can't do nothing about the problem. Even the best we do, we can't fix the problem. But when we trust Jesus Christ, Trust his word and live according to his word. He alone can be the fire. God bless you this morning. May heaven smile upon you. We pray that as you watch today, you're encouraged by the word. This one that didn't come to stir your souls or to stir your emotions. Let me say stir your emotions. But I come that. I might trouble your soul, stir your soul, amen, that we might see, amen, that what we need to do in our lives, that we might become better servants of Jesus Christ. God bless you. We love you with the love of Christ. Uh, continue to look to him.
continue trusting in him and let God be the center of your joy. And as we celebrate this month of December, the birth of Christ, amen. Love somebody. Amen. Help somebody. Amen. Because that is the will of God. Amen. And as you're watching this morning, if you are not saved, we want to invite you to come to Jesus today. Jesus wants you to be saved. You may be here. You may be watching. Amen. And you never confess Jesus as Lord in your life. And if you find yourself in that place, I want you to join me today in this simple prayer. This is a prayer of repentance. And asking God to come into your life. That you might be saved and live in Jesus Christ. Will you join me in this prayer? Point your hands maybe toward the television or whether you may be watching from where you are. And will you confess, dear Lord, I am a sinner. God, I need you in my life. Lord, save me today. I believe, and I confess, I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die in my place. And God, I accept that gift today. And God, I believe that he died on the cross. Placed dead above the grave. I believe that he got up on the third day. Lord God, and I accept that today. So Lord, Come into my heart. Allow your spirit to dwell in me. God, that I might live a life that is pleasing to you. God, thank you for salvation through the blood of your son Jesus. I accept it today. And God, as I go through the rest of my life, God, allow your spirit to dwell in me. God, that he might lead me and guide me. Teach me, Lord, how to live holy and how to live right. Lord, I praise you and I give you glory for you saving me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Bible declared today that you're saved. Romans 10 and 9 says, that Thou shalt confess with thy heart with our mouth and believe in our heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. So today, if you confess that, you are saved. And if you've never been in the church, I want to encourage you that as soon as you can, make your way out. Acknowledge to the pastor of that church wherever you desire to go, that you have confessed the Lord Jesus and that you are saved. Because the Bible said, once thou confess and believe, it said, be baptized. And let him, let him or her know that you have a desire to be baptized. God bless you this morning. May heaven smile upon you. May God keep you in his care. Uh, we love you. You're always in our prayers. Amen. I want you to know that first day the word and I are always praying for you. Amen. Amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And if you keep your eyes on Jesus, he will see you through. Amen. Amen. And as we prepare to leave from this uh, place of worship, we ask that you continue to seek the Lord. Continue to serve him and worship him. Uh, and as we're standing all over the place this morning, Amen. We want to uh, bless our offering. I said, you give your tithe and offering. If you are watching, and you're a member of First New Life, and uh, even if you desire to, to just be a, a part of the First New Life, you desire to give to this ministry, we invite you to do that. Our trustees are here every Sunday morning, amen, to receive your offering, amen, uh, to receive your gift and your tithe. 
Amen. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, God, for your word today. Lord, that your word will continue to be a light to our path, a lamp to our feet. God, that we might hide your word in our hearts that we might not stand against it. God, we thank you for these, our people. Thank you for the first life ministry. God, we thank you for who you are and all that you're doing. God, we thank you, God, that you're still in control. Now we ask, Lord, that as we give uh, what you have given to us, uh, that we bring our tithe and offer to the storehouse. God, that you will bless us that it might be for 30, 60, or 100 fold. Oh, God, that it might be used for the building of thy kingdom. Lord, we love you, we honor you, and we praise you, and we give you glory for every good and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, we thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may the rest rule and around with us and forth now and forevermore. Until we shall meet again, this we pray in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. God bless you on this morning. May heaven smile upon you. May God keep you in his care.